Kelly with Pins and Needles Kits and today we are going to be doing the tutorial for uh, our small box project number four. We created a cute little apron um, using beauty shop fabrics from Cotton and Steel and I'm going to show you what's in the box. Box. Got this cute new little sticker. Sewing is my therapy. Keeps me sane. So let's open this up. And we have our little insert with the picture of our apron on it. On the back, it tells what's in the box. We have our retro hostess apron pattern. And it has all the instructions and pictures and everything in there for you. You're gonna get um, about a half a yard of this great fabric. We have it in two colors, this color and um, a really pretty green. And you have some uh, dove gray fabric that's in there as well. And you have a piece of interfacing for the waistband. And then this great panel, oh, so cute. It has several different things on it. Measure twice, cut once, a little typewriter. Let's see, on this side we have a little kitty horse and then there's two extra pieces that could be two different things this one happens to have the rooster or the chicken and the butterflies and so we're going to use one of these for the uh, the top of the apron and then two of them for pockets so um, you can absolutely use them for whatever you like we just think they're really cute um, I'm going to make I think a couple of pot holders out of um, some of them and or they would make great pillows just all kinds of fun things you can do with this panel so um, what else is in here we have some Guterman um, thread cotton 100% cotton 247 yards on it in white and we haven't sent any marking tools in quite a while so um, I love to mark with chalk so these are two um, chalk pencils that you can mark your fabric with so um, that's our box, our small box for this month. And I wanna show you how to make the project. Okay, for the upper part or the bib of the apron, we cut two squares, one for the lining and one for the front. Um, and we just squared it up, I believe, to 10 inches. It tells in the pattern exactly how much. Um, we did this so that it wasn't a reversible apron, but if you wanted to make this reversible, you could actually button the bib onto the bottom part of the apron. I think that would be really cute. So this is gonna be my front. This one's going to be my back. Then you're going to cut two of the squares um, to eight inches so that you can make the pockets. Um, and then we have our strips for our different parts of our, this is going to be, this is a two inch strip that's going to be for your necktie. There's two of those. And then you have a two and a half inch, which is for, there's two of those as well for your um, waist ties. And then you cut two, uh, two and a half by 16 inch pieces for your waistband and one of them gets interfaced. So that one has interfacing on it. This one's the lining. So I'm gonna set those aside. And then we also have our skirt. You're gonna cut this 17 by 32 and you're gonna have about a 10 inch um, piece from the side that you're gonna cut the linings for your pockets out of that. So you have the um, linings are the same size as the front of the pockets. I have one pocket here already sewn together. Let me move this so you can see it. And so we're gonna sew with a 3 8 inch seam and we start here at the bottom and we go around the entire um, pocket and then go back down. And if you notice, I always sew into my seam allowance. And what that does is when you turn the pocket, it, one thing it does is keeps you from ripping the fabric here, but it also makes this um, look really nice and straight and flat when you turn it and press it. So I'm going to clip my corners on this so that my corners will be nice and um, crisp. So I'll cut all my corners, then I will turn it right side out and press it. And so you need to do this for both of the pockets. Okay, so these this is the neck strap. So what you're going to do is take one end and you're going to fold it about a half an inch and press it. And then you're gonna fold this in so that you have a quarter inch seam allowance, okay? And then you'll take this over to your, you'll have this at your ironing board. You're gonna turn this over and you're gonna press this in half. And what I do is I take a pen and I poke it into the end right here and into my ironing board. And then that way it kind of holds this tight so that it's easier for me to iron. And so you're gonna iron this in half all the way down. 
Then you'll open this back up. You will turn this under to the center line, same with the other side, and then fold it in half. All right, and then if you put that pin in the end, it makes it easier to pull this and press it. And then you'll put pins in it and you're gonna top stitch it down. So I've done that with this one right here. So you're gonna stitch across the, the end and all the way up the side, okay? And those are your neck straps. Next, you're going to take your waist straps or waist ties and you're going to do pretty much the same thing. You're gonna turn in one end a quarter and a, and a quarter so that you have a quarter inch seam allowance there. Then instead of folding this in half, what you're gonna do here is you're gonna fold in a half an inch and press it. And then you're gonna turn that half inch under so that you have a quarter inch seam allowance. And you'll do this on both sides of the tie. If you don't wanna do this and you have enough fabric, you can actually take two of these, put them right sides together, sew them together and have a, um, a double a double um, waist tie if you wanted to do that. Um, and so your, your waist tie is gonna look like this when you're finished. So you have your double um, quarter inch hem and on the end as well. Okay, so that's your different ties and we can put that aside for now. So next what we wanna do is um, we are going to take our upper um, apron and we're going to take our, our ties, our neck ties, and we're gonna put these so that they're one inch in from the side and we'll base those down. So you'll have one here and one right here. Once you have those basted, um, put down, basted on there, you'll take your lining and you'll put it right sides together, okay? And then you're gonna sew a 3 8 inch seam allowance up the side, across the top, and down the side. Make sure that you don't catch your, um, your necktie anywhere but right here on this edge, right here. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do that and then we will go to the next part of the project. Okay, so this is the upper part of the apron finished. So I've got my ties on here, the upper edge and the sides are finished and then the bottom is left raw for right now and then I made a little notch in the center so that when I do my waistband everything will be nice and centered. So I'm going to put that to the side and then I finished both of my pockets and I just thought that was really cute with part of it turned down. Um, so I don't know, I didn't do my first apron, I didn't have the horse, so I don't know if I want it turned down because that's blocking the little horse. If you do the turn down, it's um, four inches down, four inches across, and fold it. So what I might do is turn down that side instead. Or I might just, for on this one, I might just leave it square. So it's up to you really what you want to do. Um, but I thought the pattern looked really cute with the pocket turned down. You could always put a little button right here too if you wanted to do that. Now I left this open right here. Um, and so when I sew the pocket on, it's gonna sew that closed so I don't have to worry about doing anything there twice. But do you see how nice and straight these edges are when you turn them with that um, sewn into the seam allowance there? Okay, next is the skirt. And so um, this is my skirt right here. I've marked my center with a little notch. And so what I did on this is I did a half inch. I pressed a half inch down and then turned it a half inch. So I've got half inch uh, hems on each side and a half inch on the bottom. So I'll sew those. And then the other thing that I want to do is, a, is two gathering stitches across the top here. And so in the pattern, I call it a basting stitch. It's either a basting or a gathering stitch. But basically what it is, is making your stitch length as long as you can make it. And then sewing two rows right in the top here. And then you're, you're, we're going to pull those threads to make the gathers. So I'll show you that in just a second. So um, once I sew my side seams, I'm then going to put my pockets on. And so when I made my first one, which is the one that's on the cover, of the pattern. I actually put the pockets in four inches from the side and four inches from the top, but I didn't like how close to the center they were after I got it all gathered. So um, we're actually going to do two inches from the side here and four inches from the top up here. And so we're going to sew all the way around and on this pocket and on the other pocket. If you have done the turnover like so, you would just sew from here around and down like so. Okay.
All right, so let me get all that sewn together and then we'll put the skirt on the, um, we'll start with the waistband. All right, so I've run two rows of basting stitches here and you see how long the stitches are. A little tip for when you're trying to pull threads to gather, always pull the bobbin thread. It pulls a lot easier than if you try to pull the top thread because the top thread loops around the bobbin thread and the bobbin thread really just kind of stays straight. And so you're just going to gather this up and um, you'll just keep pulling and I usually gather it pretty um, close together and then when I get ready to put it on my waistband I will make adjustments because this needs to be gathered up to oh, approximately 15-16 inches so that's the skirt I'm gonna put that to the side right now and we're going to put the waistband on the bib all right so we're gonna take the the waistband that we ironed the um, interfacing on I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm going to just clip really tiny little V's out of the top and the bottom center so that I know where my center is when I go to put this um, on. So what I want you to do is you're going to take this and um, right sides together, line up the little V in the center and put a pin in it. And same thing, you'll just come all the way down here to where the end is and put a pin there and one in this side. Now this next part, it was kind of hard to show in the pattern, hopefully you'll understand it, but if not, that's what the video is for. Um, you would take this and put this right sides together with the back, because this is the same fabric front and back, honestly it doesn't matter, but we want to find our center. So I'll fold that in half and just cut one of the little um, notches out. All right, and so then I'll take this, line this up with the center. So I'm sandwiching the bib in between the two pieces of waistband, all right? Hopefully that makes sense to you. You can see what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to go down here, and we're going to sew all, from one end all the way to the other end, 3 8 inch, three eighths inch seam allowance. It's just a little bit wider probably than your presser foot. And we're just going to sew the bottom, so we won't be going across the ends here. All right, so I've got that pinned. I'm going to sew across here. Okay, so um, after I sewed this together, I pressed this down and I left this one up for now because we're going to be sewing this on and we don't want to catch our um, uh, the facing in when we sew the skirt to this. Um, also, I went ahead and pressed the seam allowance in on the lining for later on. You don't have to do it right now. You can always do it later, but I just, while I was at the ironing board, I went ahead and did it. One little um, tip, when I got ready to start, I'd forgotten to um, lengthen, or put my stitch back to normal length. So make sure um, when you, after you've gathered something that you hit clear or turn the dial back so that your seam stitch is correct or you're gonna have a very loose um, seam and your apron might fall apart. Um, also, when you're when you have pins in, I know you probably know this, but I always like to tell people, you want to stop before you get to the pin and take the pin out. You never want to sew over your pins. All right, so um, all right, so now I have um, my bib, and what I'm going to do next is put the waist ties on. So um, we're going to take this waist tie, and we're going to take the raw end, and we're going to lay this right here up against the the seam there all right and then we're going to fold this over so that that waist tie is sandwiched in between there and we'll do this on both sides and we're going to sew across here so we'll sew from from the edge here just to where we've sewn the seam so i'll do that for both of them and then we'll continue Okay, so um, I sewed my um, straps in, the waist straps here, and turned it and pressed it. And I did it on both sides. Now what I've done is I've gathered up my skirt, I've matched the center notches, and I've left the, the lining out. So we're just putting it to the front of the, of the bib. And you match up the, let me grab this real quick. So right here, you're gonna match up the edge to that edge right there and pin it. And you can see I've got it gathered way too much, so, but that's fine because then I can just start um, loosening that gathering a little bit, pulling that out so that I get it a little more even. All 
All right, so once I get it to fit, then I'm going to put a few more pins in it and then we'll sew it. So I'll do this for both sides, pulling those out a little bit. If you want a skirt that's not quite so full and gathered, you can always cut the skirt instead of 32 inches, you could cut it down to maybe like 25 inches or something like that to make a, a less full skirt. You could also put pleats in the top in it as well instead of um, gathers if that would um, be more pleasing to you. So, um, you know, always feel free to do what you think works best for you. All right, so I'll get this sewn on and then I'll show you the final step and we'll be finished. So um, after I um, got that all sewed together, I pressed this under and pinned the lining. Um, and I found out <laughs> when I started to do all this, I realized one of these I had sewn backwards. So the, the hem was showing on the front. So I just took it out and redid it. Um, it was easy to do since I hadn't finished sewing it all up. So I've got this all pinned. What I'm gonna do is turn this over and I'm going to um, top stitch all the way around it. So I'll do that and then we'll be finished. All right, so I've got this all top stitched and when I top stitch it down, it caught the, the lining in the back. So I am finished. I think it turned out super cute. Um, I can't stand up right now, but you see how it, it turned out. So I love this little pattern and um, the style of this apron. So hopefully you'll make lots of retro aprons um, in the future and we um, hope you enjoyed this and we want you to um, like this video and follow us, subscribe to us, and then follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Y'all have a great day.